Yes. My name is Brandon Shannon and I'm the engineering manager at NetScout for the TrueView Live solution. Imagine with me that you work for a bank and your job at that bank is ensuring that your bank branches have proper network op operations and that they can access the applications and services that they need to do their job. That bank branches rely on applications in your company's data center. Uh, different types of applications and services, for example, voice over IP, as well as anything that they might access via a, a web browser. But that's not the only types of applications that they need to run their branch. There's also the public cloud, where applications like, for example, Salesforce.com or Office 365 would run that they would need to uh, take care of customers and get the, the daily job of the bank done. Unfortunately, those services don't always work so well. They may be performing slowly on a given day. Uh, they may be performing so slowly that they're essentially down or they may actually just be down. They may not be able to access the website. It may be timing out. They may be able to place a VoIP call but not be able to hear the person on the other side. Uh, either way, when there are problems with the services that each of your locations depend upon, they can't do their job and business grinds to a halt. What you have is a visibility problem. You can often get access to the data on your local LAN or, or maybe your WAN. Maybe it's not easy though because it's at that bank branch and you have to get somebody in a car or roll a truck to get to that data, uh, SSH into a machine somewhere, whatever the case may be. But when those packets leave your network, then you can't even get to the data. Uh, it's out there on the public internet and you have a visibility problem. You can't solve the problem because you don't have any information about what the problem is. You can't do problem domain isolation. You can't get to root cause. TrueView Live exists to help you get rid of that problem and give you eyes to every corner of the network. This is a TrueView Pulse. Uh, it is a purpose-built piece of hardware. And to get visibility to all of the bank branches, you would put a pulse at every bank branch location. And you would log on to www.trueviewlive.com. You will claim each of your pulses into your account. And TrueView Live will know that you own those. And each of you have a pulse in front of you. You can see that there's a number on the back. You type that in, and now TrueView Live knows that that is your pulse. When you do that, the pulse is talked to TrueView Live. And you'll go into the TrueView Live application and you'll set up tests. For example, web tests can test anything that responds to HTTP requests, gets, and posts. And voice over IP tests, where we're doing actual VoIP phone calls, not just sending some SIP around, not just spitting some RTP bits, but we're actually placing calls through uh, uh, some sort of SIP call manager. So you set up these tests. And once you do that, TrueView Live downloads these tests to each pulse. And uh, you set up the test on a schedule. And so on that schedule, the pulses start running your test, both to your data center, internal applications, uh, voice over IP services, or external services, SASs. And when you do that, TrueView Live, the pulses upload all the test results to TrueView Live, and TrueView Live sends those test results through the analytics engine. And the analytics engine does things like service assurance, reporting, alerting, and thresholding. And once that data has been processed by TrueView Live, within uh, a few moments, the data shows up on TrueView Live dashboards in a number of different ways. For example, uh, this is a simple dashboard that's going to give you a quick enterprise view of the current state of your organization. Across the top, each of the services that you're monitoring. And down the left-hand side, each of the locations that you're monitoring from. And I can quickly see where I have problems where things aren't performing as well as they should, where things are performing so badly that they might as well be down or are actually already down. Trivia Live is also going to give you performance data in a number of different ways. For example, the top chart is an end user response time breakdown chart. We're breaking down response time into key performance indicator metrics so that you can do problem domain isolation and find the root cause of any slowness that's occurring. Or the bottom chart, which is a state chart. It's going to show you the status of services and locations over time. And again, if they're operating optimally, poorly, or unacceptably. And then finally, detailed test logs as well. So information about every active test that was done by a pulse from each location, whether that test succeeded or failed, and then the performance of that test. Was it normal? Was it degraded? Was it excessively poor? And those key performance indicators again. So to get rid of 
the problem you have of not being able to see the issues that are happening to your customers, your bank branches in my example, TrueView Live gives you visibility to all these points on your network. So what isn't TrueView Live? Well, TrueView Live doesn't involve new server deployments within your organization, no databases, no large IT projects, planning or spend, uh, no uh, maintenance tasks or ongoing maintenance costs, no large uh, projects with an IT vendor. TrueViewLive is network monitoring as a service. What does TrueViewLive require? Pretty simple stuff. Things you want to monitor, services, web, VoIP, for example. Uh, sites to monitor from, locations, offices, schools, doctor's offices, bank branches, whatever the case may be for anyone's business. Uh, a pulse, which again is our, uh, our hardware, our active test agent at each of these sites, and then obviously a web browser to access the service at TrueViewLive.com. The TrueView Live Pulse, again, is a purpose-built piece of hardware. Uh, very easy to uh, understand and use. It's got one hole on it. It's an Ethernet port. Gig Ethernet and plug it in. It uses power over Ethernet, so once you plug it in, it starts up and these lights start coming up. Hard for anyone to mess this process up. Uh, it's centrally managed and configured, so while these are going to go out all over the place, you just haven't created a huge hassle for yourself to manage these, right? Everything's managed via the website at TrueViewLive.com. Plug them in anywhere, tuck them behind somebody's monitor, leave it there, it's just going to run forever. You can update its software online, um, nothing else to do after you plug this in. But that's not the only deployment option we have to help you test from the edge. We also have a software version, it's the same software that's in here. Uh, we call that a virtual pulse. Download the software for Windows or Linux, popular Linux distributions. Download it from TrueViewLive.com. If you have your own hardware, you want to put it on, install it on your own hardware. If you want to send it to somebody else, you can send an email from the service. We'll send an email to the guy that, or the gal that you want to download it and put it on a machine for you somewhere. And it's just super simple. Uh, three lines at a command uh, prompt in Linux or run an, uh, an executable file on Windows and the software is running uh, as a service. So to be clear, it's, it's, starting it's, to gather it's, not a, it's not a VM form factor you're offering, it's literally the package itself. That's right. Okay, cool. That's Thank right. <clears throat> yeah, don't let the virtual there yeah, just cause any confusion. Yeah, no, no, I think yeah. that was the case. Just yeah. sure. So uh, deploying a virtual pulse, two minutes. Literally download a 13 reg install file, install it, and you're done. It starts talking to the cloud. Does this, uh, does this need a dedicated computer system to run it on? It does not. It doesn't use very much in terms of resources. Um, it can run on a sales guy's laptop that's telling you the SAS is slow that he's using. It can run on you know, a teacher's desktop in the back of her classroom who's having problems with you know, the, 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 the parent portal or whatever the case may be. So it doesn't need a dedicated machine by any means. Um, two questions quickly. Yeah. Um, one, so I mean obviously you buy these <clears throat> pulses, but mm -hmm. then you have to, is there a recurring cost to have access to the portal, the cloud piece? Yes. Okay. And it is priced per pulse. Okay. And then the second piece is, so part of the problem we run into with network monitoring tools like this is most of the network paths are asymmetric, right? So if we put one pulse at one site, you know, a user that's got like the next IP address might hash to a different link. So he might be having issues, whereas the pulse is on a link that's using a different circuit. So in situations like that, is there a means for the pulse to... I don't know, do something like spoof a MAC address to get a different DHCP address, or do you recommend putting multiple pulses out to cover multiple paths, or how does that? You know, that's not a problem I've seen. You can set a static IP address if you want it on a certain IP address. Oh, okay. Um, that would probably you know, be one way to address that. Okay, cool. Thanks. Proxy is also supported? Yeah, we, web proxies are a common problem, and I touch on that later, but you know, real quickly, uh, it, you know, it doesn't matter how neat this thing is if it can't get out to the internet, right? And there's a hundred different types of proxies and there's manual proxy config and pack files and security on proxy servers. And so proxies are, are a trouble, especially when you want to make this really easy to deploy. You don't want anybody to have to SSH into this thing to configure something, right? So that is one of the, the big challenges we've had. You know, ironically, it seems like a simple thing, but it is a real challenge and it's one of the things that we've, uh, we think we've solved pretty well. Okay. Yeah. So, so what protocol is used for communications to the cloud server? Uh, it's encrypted HTTP, SSL. All right. And can the probes talk to each other? Can you define it so the probe... Uh, in some cases, the probes can talk to each other and do, but typically they do not. I mean, the only example would really be a voice over IP phone call where you have RTP going back and forth between two. Mm -hmm. um, so that's possible. Uh, in general, though, everything goes to the service at TrueViewLive.com.
So they talk to the service and, and if necessary for there to be coordination between two pulses, uh, they do it through TrueView Live. Uh, but you had a slide that said that they talk to the data center, the, the corporate internal data they center. They will test applications in your data center. Okay. And gather that information from those active tests and report that back to TrueViewLive.com. So what's so the time delay? The time delay on the processing of the data? Yes. Uh, you, two minutes, one minute. So every, say every five minutes, if I go and look at the portal, it's updated yes. as of a few minutes ago. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, okay. it, is, uh, it is as close to live time as we can get it. And, and, and maybe this is, this is what I thought you meant at first, Terry, was if I deploy two probes, can I get them to ping each other as, to, as test endpoints rather than um, a service specifically? Yeah. But yeah, you know, it's a good way of doing interoffice. You know, it is, this is a little Linux computer, so yeah, it, you, it, you can do any of those things. Um, uh, if, them if pinging you know the each IP other address, isn't a problem we've tried to solve. There's a, a lot of ways for people to already do those types of things. Hey, Brandon, let me throw yeah. in a comment there. Please. Uh, one thing that uh, some of our customers have done to test that point to point is, mm -hmm. is just setting up a test to another pulse, uh, a web test to the uh, the admin interface on the Pulse. You know, it's, it's got a little web server on it. You can just hit it from any location, so. Right, so as long as you know the IP, you can add it in as a destination, but it's yeah. not necessarily showing up as a default option for, you know, you can pick a Pulse. You know? Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, yeah but that gets into the testing of, okay, so I want to test VoIP and video between two endpoints, or between two branches. <coughs> okay, so now I need to test UDP between these two. Right. Web server didn't mean doing much good there. Right. And I assume you can test that VoIP transport as well. Is that correct? Well, so today with the voice over IP test, it's a similar test. It's RTP, um, but we don't have uh, something that's just shooting packets over UDP and measuring the loss latency and jitter, which is, I think, what you mean. Right. It's coming. Okay. And I can do these from probe to probe? You would be able to do those from probe to probe. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right, great. So the third type of pulse is what we call a global pulse. This is a virtual pulse, so it's the same thing as our software pulses, the virtual pulse, and we deploy those in data centers around the world. We manage those for you. You just click a couple buttons and we'll deploy one in Singapore, Tokyo, or Oregon. And the nice thing about these global pulses is they give you kind of a third party perspective. So you can see uh, what's happening for people on your network versus what's happening off your network. Obviously, those global pulses can't test an on-prem application, but they can test anything outside of your network, uh, help you see what performance looks like from another part in the world if you have users there, or help you see how a service is performing you know, for other users you know, not on your company network. So three types of pulses, hardware, virtual, and global. So let's talk just slightly more about this piece of hardware. Uh, when I plug it in, since it is PoE, that's all I have to do. <clears throat> I plug it in and it'll take a second here and we see the lights start to come up. It's got five lights on it. So back to my bank branches example, I put this in the mail, I send one to the bank branches. There's no technical resource there. I just tell the manager, hey, plug it in. Wait till all the lights go green. Once they all go green, it's done. Put it behind a monitor. We just deployed, and now we have visibility to that bank branch. So it's that easy. The lights tell me, first of all, that it has PoE. Second, that it's got link. Third, it's talking to a DHCP server and it's getting an IP address. And it just went green there, so I got an IP address. Fourth, it accessed the default gateway. And the fifth light is it's talking to TrueView Live. And mine's gonna go orange here in a second because this pulse hasn't been claimed, but we're gonna do that in a few minutes. So after it's claimed, all five lights go green. We know we've deployed and we're done. TrueView Live has been built from the ground up to be an enterprise class solution. Our background, we know what big enterprises need. Uh, some simple things that we mentioned before, web proxy support, it doesn't matter how interesting of a solution you have if it can't reach the cloud. Uh, and uh, we've made these pulses easy to deploy while having the features that people are actually gonna need to make them work in all types of environments, environments that we haven't even imagined yet. VLAN support, again, seems simple enough. But if you're not testing the right VLAN, you're not testing the right data, uh, you're getting false results. So, you know, for this, uh, again, this little uh, box to be able to do these um, complex configuration requirements 
and be easy to deploy and centrally uh, managed via TrueViewLive.com is an important part of what we've done. Uh, Purpose-built hardware, it's built for this, and uh, it does exactly the jobs that we need, everything from acting like a web browser and testing web tests to acting like a Cisco phone uh, and, and making phone calls. Yeah. Well, maybe you just answered my question. Okay. Okay, so if it acts like a Cisco phone, it yeah. has both the data and the voice VLAN support? Yes, both data and voice VLAN support, so it talks to TrueView Live over the data. Okay. Talks to the voice over the uh, over the voice VLAN, and we're going to talk more about VoIP in a or little bit. Or talk to my data center over the data VLAN, and talk yes, to that's other correct. probes over RTP. Okay. Absolutely, voice VLAN. All right. Uh, Trivia Live is secure. It's monitored by a third party, 24 by 7 by 365, nonstop. Everything that Trivia Live stores about you, about your company, about your tests is secure. Data is encrypted both at rest as well as at flight. We know that if people are putting information into this thing, that it has to be secure for everybody to, uh, to feel comfortable with it. So TrueView Live is built, again, from the ground up with security in mind, built for scale and central management to make it easy to deploy and use TrueView Live. So with all of this taken together, TrueView Live gives you that visibility to all the corners of the network that you need. Um. Yeah. So, quick a question for the web proxy support. Mm -hmm. So, I have a location where I need a proxy, then I would uh, just uh, make uh, the configuration for this true, uh, true view pools mm -hmm. and then send it over? Yes, you would go to the website, usually. You would go to the website and you would enter your proxy config and we'll send it down to the pulse, ah, okay. except for in the case where even SSL traffic is proxied, and then the Pulse isn't going to be able to get out to get that test configuration. Yeah. So we have a web server on the Pulse. You can use our product to find the Pulse on your network. We'll show you the IP. You can connect to the embedded web server, and you can configure it there. And then TrueView Live can get past that web proxy and get out, I'm sorry, the Pulse can get past that web proxy and get out to TrueView Live. Does that make sense? OK. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so two different ways that can happen. There's actually a third, but you know, without too getting into too much details, um, web proxy supports a, a, a small challenge, but one we've solved pretty well. Hopefully as, as easily as possible to deploy these. Out of curiosity, based on the deployments you've done, how often is it a problem that the remote site does not have PoE? Uh, it, it is at times. It depends probably on the age of the company and how old their networking hardware is, honestly. Uh, in those cases, you know, they, they buy a couple PoE injectors and, and usually, um, you know, minor investment and they're off and running. Okay. How long does the battery last? The battery doesn't last very long at all. So the battery is there to help you claim it if you need to claim it and put it back in the box and mail it to somebody. Okay. Um, and so it will probably give you about 30 minutes. Okay. But that's about it. Uh, and our product will tell you, if you leave it on battery, it will pop up a message and say, hey, you know, your, your pulse and the pulse number, whatever you named, it's on battery power and you're going to want to get it on PoE. Yeah, I, I've had a real mix of clients in the past who've, yeah, some of them have PoE as their standard absolutely everywhere. Others, because of the extra cost, just put it where they have to and skimp and save on the rest. Yep. And I, I would say it's probably 50-50 what we run into. Yeah. It's certainly not... Um, pervasive. Okay. 